Have you ever wanted to play Stalker with everything? With all the things, all the places? The entire zone? Maybe a couple extra places too? I'm getting shot at already and I just started the video, that's rude. Well, bam, look at all this nonsense. So this is a very popular, as of right now, mod. This is a bad idea, I shouldn't be looking at that. I'm gonna get a shot. For Call of Pripyat, by the name of Call of Chernobyl. And it is kind of the new hotness going on right now for a stalker because, well, it's a mod that's been released and the stalker modding scene as of late has been known for mods that have not been released and will probably never be released. But uh, Call of Chernobyl started out as a very ambitious kind of uh, modder's resource style of thing. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what the term modder's resource means, a modder's resource is the idea that it's kind of a shell, a large open, not necessarily empty, but very open uh, kind of template for you to make your own content off of. Uh, and that's what this started out as. And it includes 32, as of right now, separate maps in the zone. And 32 is a lot. Uh, 32 is the entire zone that's been present in all three Stalker games, and then some. That includes some cut content that hasn't been present in any of the finished versions of any of the games. Some stuff from some of the alpha or beta builds of Stalker before they were released back in like 2007 and, and before. And uh, things like the generators level, for instance. And that even now, uh, with the latest update, includes uh, a level, the Truck Cemetery, which is really just... It's not actually a level from any Stalker game specifically. It's not actually present in any individual game. It's just something that the team thought would be cool to add from them actually seeing the real-life uh, zone around Chernobyl and seeing that area and wanting to put it into a video game form. So they did, and it's huge and very impressive and very creepy. It's basically a gigantic sort of military vehicle graveyard. So it's kind of expanded since then, and it started out as quite ambitious, but the team quickly proved that it wasn't too ambitious for them to actually complete. And I say complete as if it's done, and it's not done per se, they're still working on it. They're still adding to it and tweaking it and uh, improving on it. But it's also not in a really incomplete, unfinished, barely playable state either. Not anywhere near that level of, uh, you know, it's not done yet. It's actually very, very playable and has a good amount of content available for you. So this video is going to be kind of a basic overview, <clears throat> I suppose, of what... Call of Chernobyl has to offer, and expect more of this because I'm going to be playing a lot of this mod for quite a while because I love Stalker, and I've been wanting an excuse to get back into it, and this has quickly become a very, very good excuse to do just that. So what is the mod? Well, besides just being a resource of the entire zone for you to play around in, it is basically a free play sandbox, meaning uh, you don't actually have the story of, uh, of any of the games, which for some people might be a bit of a turnoff, but it allows you to kind of just get in and go crazy. It acts like the free play mode from the Stalker games that normally engages when you sort of f finish the games. It's very much like that. And that it's an open world sandbox run around and uh, do a lot of nonsense kind of mode. But in place of the story, there is also... Well, there's a lot of kind of random events that can happen. There's a faction system when you actually begin the game. Ooh, look, Galil. When you begin the game, there is actually a uh, a choice. You can choose which faction you want to be a part of, specifically. And uh, I'm actually, I chose Duty for my first playthrough, so I am, I'm in the Duty faction. You're welcome. Feel free to hate me. And it's kind of cool, because uh, depending on what you choose, 
you will get a different set of starting gear as well as start in a different area, of course. So as duty, I started in uh, Rostock in the duty base in the bar area from, uh, oh god, from Shadow of Chernobyl. However, I am, of course, able to go everywhere. And the game, well, the mod itself, is actually built off, specifically, off of the Call of Pripyat version of the engine. And it requires that you have Call of Pripyat installed in order to actually install the mod. However, the mod is standalone. Meaning... Oh, God! Meaning you don't actually need Call of Pripyat installed to play the mod. Once It's basically kind of an anti-piracy prevention. Uh to have the, the mod installed, and that's about it. After the mod is actually installed, you're free to do whatever. And in fact, I don't even have Call of Pripyat installed on my system anymore, just to help free space. And the mod works just fine. Uh, in fact, you are deliberately meant to not install it in the same directory as Call of Pripyat as you would a standard mod. It needs to be installed in its own directory, uh, for it to work properly. Now, this idea has been done before, mostly in Lost Alpha for Shadow of Chernobyl, but I would consider this a much better mod uh, compared to Lost Alpha because it's got a lot more content in it, it's a lot more balanced in terms of what the content available is uh, actually for, you could say. Like, there's a lot more to it. And also... It's got a significant amount of uh, of stability to it. I haven't had much of a crash issue or anything, which is Im impressive due to the sheer size of this mod and what's actually available in it, and of course the fact that I've installed several add-ons on top of that, because of course this is a modder's resource, so there are multiple additions available on top of just the standard mod. So you can mod the mod and put even more on it, and I have done so. And I would recommend that you do so as well. There are some very good things available, and I'll go into that in a minute. Oh, God. But more or less, uh, it's very stable for how much and how ambitious it actually is. And considering that the X-Ray engine is famously held together by duct tape, vodka, and Russian sorcery, it's actually kind of surprising that it it is as stable as it is, and uh, it's actually pretty impressive. So, right now, I'm actually running with the STCOP uh, weapon add-on for it. There are three main weapon mods for Call of Chernobyl. There is OWR, which is Original Weapons Renewal, which is the smallest and most kind of vanilla balanced of the three. Okay, someone's got an RPG. That's good. Also, those dogs just spawned out of nowhere. That's a little silly. There is AO, which is Arsenal Overhaul, which is uh, quite large, and I would say... Oh, no! I would say it's also the most highly polished across the board of all of the mods in general. If you want, you know, a really high quality set of weapons, that's definitely the one to go for. It's got a lot of weapons in it, and a lot of them are very, very good. Uh, you're talking a lot of very good texture quality on the weapons, a lot of good animation quality. It's just a highly polished weapon add-on. And then you have STCOP, which I have no idea what the hell that stands for. I'm guessing COP is called Crip yet, but I don't know what the ST is. And that's actually the one I decided to go for for this playthrough, because of the sheer variety in what it offers. It is extremely varied. It doesn't have as much polish as something like Arsenal Overhaul has. You know, like I said, Arsenal Overhaul is just high polish across the board. Something like STCOP, you'll see a little bit more variance in the texture quality and animation quality of some of the weapons. Like, for instance, I'm using this, which is the a uh, a USAS-12. You'll see that the reload animation and the firing animation and sound assets are actually really good on this weapon, in particular. But uh, the texture quality on the weapon itself, eh, a little middling. Not super great, but also not terrible. And uh, you'll see that some weapons have better animations than others, and some weapons have better textures than others. It's just not quite as 
uh, highly polished across the board in general as something like Arsenal Overhaul is, but it still has its very high moments, and it has a lot of variety to it, so that's why I decided to choose it. And it's very much up to you what you decide to add to your install of Call of Chernobyl. If anything, you can just play it exactly like it is if you want. Some of the other things I've added to it that I would recommend are Dr. X's Quests, which is a kind of story mod that adds a bit more of a... Ooh, match. Uh-oh. That adds a bit more of a kind of main quest line style of affair to it. Because, of course, you don't have the main quest line anymore as it stands. So you need the ability to do something similar to add something like that on your own if you want to. And it adds the ability for various characters to give you more varied uh, random quests and it adds kind of a main quest line substitute, you could say. That's pretty good. And you've also got some other things, like, I mean, you can see down there I have a small script that makes it to where sometimes if I'm the first person to loot a body, I get some money off of them. I've also got uh, Item Soup, which is a add-on to STCOP that adds some more consumable variants, like different kinds of bandages and food and repairing items and things like that. Actually, some stuff that's- oh no! from Misery, and a couple of other things. Whew. This place is rough. I'm in Dead City right now. If you couldn't tell. And it is just as horrible as I remember. Hmm. Some 45 ammo and some Hydroshock rounds, which I'm not really going to carry around right now because I'm kind of up there on the weight limit that I've currently got. But yeah, so this, like I said, is just kind of a basic introductory as to what uh, what the mod actually is. And I will definitely be actually doing more on the mod because it's really enjoyable. I would say that it's probably become my favorite Call of Pripyat mod because it's just, there's just so much to it. It's kind of amazing to be able to visit the entire, excuse me, the entire zone, kind of seamlessly. Well, I say seamlessly, like there aren't, there, there are loading screens, obviously, but it, they're pretty quick, and it's kind of amazing to have all of this in one game. You know, I mean, I'm in Dead City right now. This was from uh, Clear Sky, but I'm playing it in what's technically Call of Pripyat and I'm playing it with a bunch of other weapons and factions and stuff that weren't normally available. Which is cool. The dynamic of having all of this available to you from just the very beginning in such a wide open and ambitious state is very, very cool. And like I said, it works pretty well. Uh, it's not perfect, obviously. There, There's room for improvement, and uh, they are consistently still working on the mod. Uh, there is a 1.4 beta version available that I'm not currently running just for some compatibility reasons if you want to try that out. And there is also the official finished 1.4 version that is being currently worked on that will at some point be uploaded. Oh hi, you're literally right there. That's a problem. But I'm working my way through right now this area and getting shot to pieces. Apparently, I did not mean to pick up that. Oh, duct tape. You can never have too much of that. And some bread. So, yeah, it is just an incredibly enjoyable experience to actually be able to play through all this. Let me show you that again now that I have a space where I can sit still and not get, like, shot in the face. Look at all this. You've got this entire zone to go through. You can cross the whole thing, if you want to. It's kind of amazing. All the way up to the power plant itself, and of course, some small areas, the generators up there, the cut area, and you've got, of course, some other zones down here, like areas from Call of Pripyat. You've got Zaton and Jupiter and Pripyat itself. 
And of course, right now, I just came from the Great Swamp earlier, and now I'm in uh, Dead City, and you can go to, like, the Little Man's Hospital areas, and you can go over to Red Forest, and even the underground areas, like Agriprom, Agriprom Underground, the X-Labs, and the Monolith uh, War Labs and stuff, they're all there, and you can go to them. And uh, some of the X-Labs aren't yet populated with very much stuff, because again, this started out as a modder's resource, so not everything has spawns in it yet. But I have a script that actually does spawn mutants in the X-Labs, and in the 1.4 version, either the beta if you decide to try it out, or the official version if you decide to wait for it, will have spawns in the X-Labs. Officially. So, again, they are continually improving, and something that started out as a modder's resource and that was a shell for people to make their own fun out of has been consistently upgraded and worked on by the community and then the dev team themselves have added things from the community's uh, sort of feedback and officially actually you know added community features as actual things that people wanted to have in the full version and things like that and it's just continued from there to become something really very impressive and uh, I feel that a lot of people if you're a fan of stalker in any way should really give it a shot I have passed the threshold where I can repair my Siva suit with the glue I have on me oh wait I can do this and I can apply a patch. Let's use a Merc patch because I got like a trillion of them. Boop. Now I can... Uh... Now I'm good. So yeah, it's pretty much everything that I, I love out of Stalker in one gigantic package. That's not quite as much of like a, a, a giant hot mess as uh, Stalker soup. I love the soup, don't get me wrong, but it is a mess. And it's also not quite as crazy as SGM, but it's also larger than SGM. And it's just got everything, every part of the zone. And it works. It works very well. And also that truck cemetery level is crazy. So yeah, I wish that you would try it out. I, I hope that you check it out. I will link you in the description. There's a there'll be a bit.ly link to the official mod db main page for the Call of Chernobyl mod. And there you can find either a six part download for the mod itself or a torrent to the entire thing. The torrent is gonna run you about three gigs. It's not that large in size really. And a full install is gonna be more around nine. You can also find the 1.3.2 patch there, which is the latest sort of stable version. You can also find the 1.4 beta. You can find all the various add-ons that I'm using, like the weapon mods, the uh, item soup add-ons if you want to use those, the various scripts and quest add-ons and all kinds of stuff, and if you want to, you know, tweak it to your heart's desire by adding this and that, you can do that. So, just go from the place that I link, and just, you know, go from there, and you'll be able to find whatever you want, basically. And make your own experience out of it, because that's what it's meant for, and it does it incredibly well. So, Expect some actual kind of playthrough style videos of this fairly soon. I just wanted to make this first to show that, yes, I am in fact playing it and I'm having a lot of fun with it for people that were wanting me to check it out. I've been meaning to check it out for a little while and uh, I just haven't really gotten the chance yet and have been waiting for a little bit of a stability improvement. And now that that is available, well, I'm diving into it and it's really fun. If you're worried about whether you can run it, because it's of course a, little, a bit more taxing than the standard version of Call of Pripyat due to the extra memory constraints and things like that, it's actually not that much more uh, taxing. It's a little bit more taxing, but as long as you can handle, say, 4 gigs of RAM, and as long as your PC could actually run Call of Pripyat at, at uh, high settings, or even medium settings really, you'll be able to run this just fine. It's mostly CPU intensive and memory intensive because of the amount of stuff that's actually loaded in each level. The fact that there are so many levels and they're all, you know, well realized. None of these are like half-assed recreations, by the way. These are all the actual full-on 
levels of the entire zone that are imported and built. And also, I should say that that's not even the case, that some of them are improved. There are various spawns that are put in. There are even things like anomaly fields put into earlier levels, which is cool. So you may go to a Shadow of Chernobyl area and find that there are now anomaly fields in it and stuff, where you can search for artifacts and and do cool stuff like that, because of course anomaly fields didn't exist in the current state that we think of them back in Shadow of Chernobyl, so they put that mechanic in and actually went back and seeded those areas with new stuff to find, which is cool. The faction system is really good. You can actually help the faction you want take over new territory, which is really cool. You can help them take over areas and become more spread out through the zone, so I'm helping duty spread the glory. Spread the, the glory of duty, yes. And uh, become more entrenched, and I'm helping them keep various areas. You will be attacked by mutants and other factions that are the enemies of that faction and stuff like that, which is cool. It has a nice dynamic feeling. The zone does feel alive, which is something that, whoops, Stalker has always done quite well because of the A-Life systems in it, and mods have always kind of built onto, I would say, and this is no exception. This very much relies on the whole A-Life aspect to make for a kind of big faction warfare feeling, and it, it manages that. So you have all the various factions uh, battling it out, taking territory, retaking territory back from each other and things like that. It's pretty crazy, and it works really well. So yeah, this is Call of Chernobyl, just a basic overview of what it is and how it works, and uh, the idea that you can add stuff to it and things like that. And to show that, yes, I am aware that uh, it is popular. I am definitely going to be playing more of it, and I am going to certainly, certainly be making content on it. So ex ugh, expect some coming soon. Thank you for the recommendation. And uh, this is something I've been wanting to get around to for a bit, so I'm glad it's, uh, it's in such a good state now. Let's see, anything else I wanted to say? Uh, I should point out that the installation process is really simple. It's very easy. The installer is just an EXE that you just install with, you know, just double click, bam, you're done. And, uh oh. It is really foggy here. And after that, you simply just mod it like you would a stalker install. You just drop game data folders on top of each other, replace the stuff you need to replace, and you're done. It's very simple. Of course, do keep backups of your game data so you don't have to continuously reinstall the whole thing over and over again. And uh, to make the process, you know, nice and easy for yourself. It does come with Atmosphere, of course, installed. The basic install does, and it works nicely. It is a game that keeps on giving, Stalker is. And uh, this is just the latest in a number of examples of consistently impressive, ambitious, and hugely interesting mods that the community has managed to make. So a shout out to the guys over at Facepunch forums, by the way, because of course a lot of the developers do post there. And, uh, well, if you're interested, please do give it a try and expect more content going forward. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, if there's any specific thing you actually do want to see, because I do want to make more, then please do feel free to let me know, because I want to. So thanks again, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Sit down.